Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Classic Video Games back with another cool pinball repair video for you this evening. Look what we have here. You may have seen a few weeks back we worked on a Williams F14 Tomcat pinball machine that was in exceptionally nice shape. And we played the heck out of it. And then 10 people told me that a switch wasn't working right. But I still enjoyed it even with the switch not working right. Uh, but we have got another one in that we are going to work on. And we're going to do a lot more work on this one. That particular one there had problems with uh, the displays and uh, uh, like a resistor pack on the, on the game board. Just some little minor stuff that we fixed. But this one is in much worse shape. It almost looks like it just washed up on a beach somewhere, right? <laughs> it's definitely not as nice as the previous one. But we're going to see if we can get it a lot nicer and, and make it a very uh, presentable and well-playing machine. So that's what we're going to do. So uh, it's got its issues cosmetically, but it appears to all be there. And uh, I think with a little bit of work, it may not look quite as nice as the other one, but it'll, uh, I think it'll look a lot nicer than it does now. So I figured I would do a video showing you the condition that we got it in. And then uh, at the end, we can show what condition it ends up in. So these uh, F-14 Tomcats were stenciled. And, uh, you know, it's kind of how they usually are. It's in decent shape, but it's got wear here and there. We may try to touch up some of that black at least. You'd be surprised how much just touching up the black trim on something like this can make it look a lot better. So we may do that. Um, it's nothing major, no major... Uh, artwork missing or anything. Um, you can see it has the serial number down here. Uh, it's number 106393 if anybody's interested. Somebody was talking about they wanted to put it in the other one in the uh, um, uh, the owner's list or whatever. 106393 is this one. We found it. We found it, folks. I don't know where this thing came from. We had a gentleman bring it to us and wants us to work on it. I don't know where he got it. I didn't talk with him that day. Uh, Joe did. He might know where he picked it up, but it appears to me that it hasn't worked in a while. <coughs> Excuse me, but uh, who knows? So you've got like a flipper rubber up here that broke off at some point and doesn't appear to be in the machine. You've got the rubber rings up there, just filthy where they've probably not been changed in at least 25 years and I, I'm not exaggerating I mean I, I think it's actually been 25 years <laughs> um, but we'll look at that more whenever we get the glass off of it here in a little bit you've got these plastic shields that are on this game that are all yellowed and dirty and uh, pretty ugly so he was asking us you know what we could buy to fix it up so uh, the gentleman that we worked on his F-14, he had these cool stickers that he put over those that look really cool. And I think we may do that on this one too because it just looks so nice. And this one has an issue. I mean, those look bad, you know, so they need, they need something. So we'll probably do that. Um, and then we'll clean the play field. Our, our main problem is going to be these inserts here have yellowed, cracked, and then they have the um, the artwork worn off of them. So I haven't completely decided what we're going to do with that yet. Um, mm, that's a problem because I don't I don't want to clear coat the play field. I mean, I'm, I, with these play fields like this that are that have the artwork uh, uh, printed with like a gradient and stuff, it's, you can't see it right now because of the glass, but. Basically, there are little stipulated dots all over the playfield that make the, the gradients and the texture. You can't really repaint that. I mean, I can't. It can be done by somebody who's a real pro, but I'm not good enough to really pull that off. Um, so I can't repaint a lot of it. I can repaint black lines and things like that, but I don't know if I want to go all the way and clear coat the playfield and all that. And then you can get stickers with the letters on it which I will probably do, but I don't know if I really want to clear coat over stickers. You know, it's kind of a... So I haven't completely decided what we're going to do there yet, but you will find out soon. Um, the back glass looks fine. 
everything's kind of cocked a little bit. It's kind of hard to tell in the in the uh, video, but basically the back glass and the little display board is like that. Or I guess like that. <laughs> um, so we'll have to fix that. There is a little lift channel that's supposed to be here where you can lift up the back glass to get it out. That's not on there. This is all minor stuff. I mean, that, that we can get that straight. That lift channel is like $10. No big deal. We have the three beacons on the top. That middle one is all yellow. It's not supposed to be like that. It's supposed to be clear. So what we'll probably do is leave the red one, clean it up. Leave the blue one, clean it up. The blue one looks kind of green, though. But uh, we'll see how it looks when it lights up. And we'll replace this middle one. Just the middle one being replaced will make it look much nicer because that's the one that you can obviously tell isn't supposed to be like that uh, and then uh, we need to plug it in and see what kind of electrical condition it's in I have a feeling we may have to replace the displays for them we may put some LED displays in it uh, like the previous one had um, and we even need legs for it so the, the old legs are all beat up and everything so we're gonna put new legs on it they had about there's been about five major styles of legs so the, the a lot of the older games have like painted dark gray legs on it Bally did a lot of like that and then some of them had chrome legs so these are smooth and these are smooth and then they went to some legs that are similar to this these are chrome and they have ribs all the way down them it's like a textured rib it runs all the way down them but the original ones only ran halfway down it those were the ones that were on System 11 games, and this is a System 11, so I could put those on it, wouldn't be that big of a deal. I could put smooth ones on it, wouldn't be that big of a deal, but you know, they're all the same price, so I'm just going to order the correct ones that have the half ribs on it. Nice chrome, half ribbed legs. Uh, so we have to order that. Um, they also had black uh, ribbed legs at some point. They had chrome, I mean, uh, brass, kind of gold ribbed legs as well, so there's a bunch of different styles. You can get all those at uh, the Pinball Resource and at Pinball Life, which I, I think Pinball Life is the only one that has the uh, System 11 ones with the half ribs. So that's the outside of it. Let me uh, let me take this back glass off and let's see what this sucker looks like inside. Hopefully that board set looks pretty good and that it doesn't need a, a ton of uh, work, but it'll I'm sure it'll have to be serviced. But let me take the back glass out and uh, we'll see what, what's going on inside of there. There is our back glass. I was able to get out in one piece. That's always good. Back panel looks pretty good. Hmm. Okay. What have we here? All right. If I can get the door to stay open, I'll show you what I'm looking at. Let me lighten it up. Okay, so power wires come in. They run up here to the power supply. Now these commonly have the general illumination all burn up, which is this plug right here. But on this one, guess what? Looks fine. No problems. Very cool. They do have a wire soldered here to one of the test points um, and then a red wire soldered up here to a test to a a, uh, a point so that's doing something that it shouldn't be doing <laughs> we'll figure that out at a later time uh, this thing hanging down what do you suppose that is that is the rubber belt or one of them that runs the things at the top. So this motor turns, which turns this pulley, which turns the the beacons. Okay. So definitely need new beacon light uh, belts. Might need a new beacon motor. We'll have to see if it still works. So a little relay board probably that runs it. That is the sound board over there. It all looks good. Here is the main board. Has three batteries in it. It doesn't look like they're leaking, but it looks like the ones before it have leaked. It doesn't look... I see a little bit of... 
Yeah, I see a little trouble. There's definitely some damage. So we'll have to fix that. Um, and then we have the display board. But everything looks pretty cool other than the battery damage, which is a shame, but it's very common. Most of these have that. Okay, so I always open them up before I turn them on because I just want to see if anything's falling out of place. Sometimes, you know, things will be hanging down and, and touching the wrong thing. On this one, it was just a rubber belt, so no big deal. Okay, so uh, let's take the glass off. I'm going to do the same thing inside of it just to see what kind of... Uh, what kind of condition the inside looks looks like and see if the same thing if anything's hanging down out of the way and then if all of that looks cool we'll plug it up and see if it does anything okay so there's a bunch of stuff in it there's actually some parts just promotional uh, plastics from Pinbot which was probably slightly before this one um, there's a power cord, a whole bunch of the papers, a little bit of the paperwork, some for Pinbot, uh, a bunch of these resistors because these, uh, the flasher, these resistors fall off of the, these boards run the flashers and these resistors fall off of them a lot of times. Some fuses, I'll clean all this stuff up and see what we got. Um, that is. Nothing like super interesting. Some resistors. I want to show you the balls though. So the, the four pinballs were still in it, but look at these suckers. See all the rust all over them? If you play with rusty balls, people, it tears up your artwork. Don't do that. All right, so we're going to put new balls in it. Um, so, starting at the bottom, there is an up kicker down there. Looks fine. There's a diode board. It all looks fine. There's a relay board. It looks fine. Another relay board. It looks fine. Two more up kickers or some kind of gate, it looks like. They look fine. Uh, the upper two flippers, they look fine. Now, of course, all this needs worked on and cleaned and stuff like that, but... Here's the, one of the flasher boards and one of the resistors. does look like it's missing off of it. Uh, there's the three pop bumpers. They look fine. Lots of light bulb sockets. They all look fine. Uh, Playfield mounted or PCB mounted light sockets. They all look pretty fine. Those little twist connectors that hold the bulbs in. You can still get those. Sometimes they're missing, but that's no big deal. Uh, the two kickers, they look fine. Uh, all the wiring looks fine. I don't see anything, you know, obviously burnt up. Here's another resistor that's either fallen off or just wasn't uh, needed on the board. I don't know. That one may be missing. Yeah, I think it is. I think it is missing. Um, a snubber board. The two main flippers. Uh, the ball eject coil. So it all looks dirty, but it all looks fine. There's no there's no major problems. I don't see anything that's like obviously going to need replaced. We might end up with a with some broken wires and some dirty uh, connectors, and we got a whole bunch of light bulbs that need replaced. But other than that, everything looks like it's going to be just fine. Might need to rebuild the flippers or something. Uh, yeah. So under the playfield, not that big of a problem. But now that I've got the glass off, let's look at the top of the playfield again, just to get a better idea of, of where that is. Okay. So this is what I'm talking about. See, you've got the inserts are worn, and then there is mylar over the top of it. So there is a big old piece of mylar on the whole bottom half of the playfield. That is glued to the playfield over these old screwed up inserts. Very tough to fix. And here you have mylar glued over mylar. Okay. So. We'll have to clean it and just see <laughs> see how it looks and then see if 
Hmm. I don't know, folks. It's tough. I don't. I don't like when they put mylar over stuff that like isn't in very good shape because then. You know, what do you do with it? You can take the mylar off, but it is a pain in the ass. It's just the only way to put it. And um, it often lifts the artwork off of the play field. So it'll, you know, when you're done, <laughs> much of the artwork will be missing. <sighs> but I can't paint on mylar because it won't hold up. So just simple things like replacing the lines, like the black lines around the things, can't really do. So, I don't know folks, it's going to be a tough one. Might have to try to pull the mylar and, and destroy about half of the art. There's also mylar up here, but I think this may be factory actually, because the, um, the lettering survived. You see there's bubbles under it. So now a lot of people say, oh well, I've seen people do it. Yeah, you just you just you heat it up or you cool it off, you take the mylar off. Well, it takes forever. And most people don't do it on a play field that's kind of worn. Like this one, it's it's not collector's quality. You know what I mean? So it it uh and you know, I'm I'm very positive, I'm a very uh <laughs> I see all the value in this, so I'm not slamming this machine. This machine's awesome, and it's going to be awesome. But whenever you see somebody spending a lot of time to, to bring one back, usually it's on one that's in really nice shape, and it's just they want to take the mylar off because underneath it's so nice and all that. <sighs> Hopefully the mylar, since it was put on later, maybe it's not as strongly adhered. I don't know, but I've tried to take it off before, and it pulls up paint. Not a good idea for me. But we may not have a choice because we can't leave it like this. I mean, this is... That's rough. So then you pull the mylar off. So then what do you do? Well, you probably would take a razor blade and chip all of the... This yellowed is the, is the clear coat, right? Chip all of this off to where you're down to a smooth um, insert and then paint your black back in, and then clear coat it, and then put your stickers on top of it with the lettering and everything. That's kind of what it needs. So we might attempt it. We may attempt it, people. Might screw it all up too, but we'll, uh, we'll just have to see. I'll think about it a little bit. Might do a little test piece. If I can do a little test piece, maybe uh, maybe I'll figure out a way to do it. <laughs> Alright, but up here at the top, it's in much better shape, I think, because the Mylar is factory. So a lot of that can just be cleaned up, and it'll look pretty good. And all the lights and everything, once we get that all back, everything will be cool. Um, the rails just need cleaned. Nothing's broken, really, I don't that I see. It's just, uh, it's just everything's filthy. So, hmm, very cool. Well, we're going to have to get in on it. Get on it. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to plug it up and see if it does anything. What do you think? Let's give her a go. See if she still wants to cooperate after all these years. Oh, wait a minute. I have a clue. Operator tax sticker. We were in South Carolina. This was operated in 1991 in South Carolina. Now, just because the license expired doesn't mean that that's the last year they operated it. They may have just not got a sticker. But usually, you can get you know. I would not. I would not be surprised if this thing hasn't been sitting since the mid '90s. Yeah, I mean, it looks kind of rough. But we're gonna bring it back. All right, so we're gonna plug it in and see if it's got any juice left. Oh, you know what? We can tell by the batteries. You know, the bat whatever dates on the batteries, if you subtract about 10 years, um, that's probably when the batteries were purchased. But that could have been somebody just trying to... I don't know, because you can, you can get it up and running without the batteries. So the last time the batteries were changed is probably the last time the game was running. So that'll tell us. Okay, so we're going to plug it in and see if it does anything. 
All right, we plugged it in. Now, what do you think? What are the odds? You see how rough it is. You saw there was battery corrosion on the motherboard. How well did Williams build this sucker? Well, let's give it a try. The poor thing is trying. You know what I think? I think it's stuck in the test menu. And the displays, it can't see anymore. <laughs> oh, wait a minute! Two displays have held on through all these years. They're, st they're tripping. But they're trying. The, uh, here we go. It might do it. All right, it's up and running. The, half the displays are out. The, um, I would say 60% of the playfield lights are not working. Some of them are, though. Let's see if the coil still want to work. Soundboard still works. Switches, some of them still work. It may not start because I don't have the four rusty pinballs in there. There were four rusty balls. Did I throw them in the trash yet? Nope, they're there. Sometimes games will not start if they don't have their pinballs in them. I think the solenoids may be. Well, I think the solenoids aren't working. When you hit start, it doesn't try to start. Maybe it's because the door's open, though. Duct tape. Why will it not shut though? Let's try this again. All right, so our solenoids aren't working. About half of our lamps aren't working. Half of our displays aren't working, but that that area that gets uh, battery damage on the playfield is the display area, so it, that could be the problem with the displays. Uh, the playfield is trashed. They put mylar over the inserts that are screwed up. <coughs> Soundboard works great, um, and the back box, the back panel has six light bulbs still on. So I think that's a damn fine starting point. The thing is trying to help us, right? Now, I have this theory, folks. You tell me what you think about this, okay? This machine is an inanimate object, okay? It's nowhere near as important as a human. But these things were hand-built on assembly lines in Chicago by humans. So humans traded their time to create this thing and got paid a paycheck for it. Okay? And this thing only has one purpose in the world. Its purpose is to entertain people, right? It's a pinball machine, so it tends towards its purpose. Like, it, it, it tries to be a pinball machine. That's all it was ever created for, is to be a pinball machine. So, the thing will attempt to help you if you attempt to help it, right? So we're going to work on it. We're going to help this thing along, and we're going to get it back. And it's trying, you know what I mean? It's trying. I mean, the damn thing's been neglected and abused and had some bad batteries put in it. So it's got issues, but it's still trying. It's, it's holding on. It's doing all it can do to get those two damn displays to come on. It, it can only get half of the lights to come on, but if we'll help it a little bit, maybe it'll start the other ones working, right? So the thing, it wants to be a pinball machine again. It wants to, it wants to play. It's at a position right now where... You can't start a game. Wait. What? Huh? Right? So it's dead to the world right now, but it's trying so hard. So we're going to help it the rest of the way along. And we're going to do what it can't do, right?
So uh, leave your comments below. We'll get started on on the next video. Make sure to give us a thumbs up for taking the trouble to film it for you. <laughs> Make sure to check out our links below the video. And next time we'll start bringing her back to life. We'll see you then, folks. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you. We'll see you on the next video.